Hello, hello, hello. This is Gail Nicholson once again, back with your Corona Spotlight 2020. Hello, everyone. Happy, happy Monday. Oh my gosh, we got another week. This is awesome. This is awesome. Awesome. So, um, my guest today is a very, very nice lady. Her name is Mary Kate Gulick, and I am really, really excited about this um, content marketing webinar that she's got going tomorrow that I want her to tell you all about. Because all of this other stuff that we've been doing as far as the Corona Spotlight um, and helping you find people that'll help you through this um, chaotic and confusing time, um, all of these other little pieces are not gonna be coherent unless you're doing something with your content that actually um, delivers to people. So let me have you welcome Miss. Mary Kate Gulick, content marketing coach. Thank you so much for being with us today, Mary Kate. How are you doing? Great, Gail. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm wonderful. I am absolutely wonderful. It's a beautiful, beautiful day in Phoenix. How is it where you're at in Nebraska? I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, and it's lovely. It's going to be 69 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, so cannot complain. Fabulous. Absolutely wonderful. Well, how are things going with you in Nebraska with this, what are we into like week 532 of yeah. the coronavirus quarantine? Week 1 million in 2018. I, yeah, I've lost count. And I think a lot of people have, all the days are starting to blur together and you know, it's going well. I think the big thing for all of us, people who are, you know, uh, helping businesses is we're just watching people that we've worked with for years struggle. You know, a lot of traditional businesses and uh, brick and mortar businesses really have to do some finagling to adapt to the situation that's happening. And um, it's been, it's been hard for them and everybody wants to help them as much as they can. So I think, I feel like people here in Nebraska have gotten into full on helper mode mm -hmm. and I love that. And I'd love to watch it. And it really kind of reaffirms your faith in humanity when bad things start happening and the neighbors just pitch in and make it happen. And that's what we've been doing for our business community, both locally and, and online. And it's been fabulous to watch. Isn't that wonderful? It's like, um, and I know it occurred before 9-11, but it's that 9-11 mentality of that, you know, and we're seeing it all over the world. It's not just Americans, but people, it's human nature. When things start to go sideways, mm -hmm. there's always like Mr. Rogers, so watch for the helpers. There are yeah. always those whose nature it is to help, to bridge the gap, to do whatever it is that's um, needed in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So um, what are some of the best helper stories that you've heard so far? Um, oh, big ones. I mean, right now, what, I mean, you're saying the same thing. We're all at home. Everybody's, you know, kind of got this collective anxiety. We're dealing with loneliness. We're dealing with depression. And a lot of, you know, more traditional counselors have reached out and they're like, hey, I know how to do my practices with my existing clients via Zoom, but I know that there are a lot of people who are going to be experiencing symptoms who have never experienced them before. How do we get out in front of those, those people and let them know what you're experiencing right now is A, normal, and B, completely, you know, treatable. We can talk this through and we can, you know, get you to a place where you're not feeling so, so terrified, so lonely, so, you know, so really uh, down. And so a lot of traditional counselors have really stepped up and wanted to put valuable content in front of people who are not their clients mm -hmm. um, to, to really they understand that what's happening now is, is a mental health time bomb. Um, we are not used to dealing with circumstances like this. And, you know, we have people who are specially reaching out to healthcare workers who are dealing with acute trauma right now with what they're having to witness in the, in their hospitals and in their practices. Right. Um, and even beyond that, the children of healthcare workers who don't understand why mom can't come in and give them a hug when she gets home from work, she's got to go into the garage, strip down, run up to the shower and take a shower before she can say hello to them. Mm -hmm. It's really scary. For a kid. Yeah. So you know, traditional counselors really working through ways to help people process that while it's happening through their digital content. It's been, it's been really inspiring to see. And of course, these are people who are not marketers, so they don't really know how to, how to do that and what the best way is. So that's a lot of what we've been, we've been working on. 
And beyond that, I mean, life coaches and career coaches have been like, okay, we have a bunch of people who have just lost their jobs, who are at complete loose ends in their lives and are really starting to think, I can't go back to what I did before because it's not, you know, everything is going to change after this. So what am I supposed to do with my life? They're sitting there having these significant existential crises while they're in uh, in isolation. So life coaches and career coaches have been, I have to figure out a way to reach out to these people to get these, you know, these strategies in front of them for processing and kind of figuring out what is my next step when my career has completely, um, (laughs) been upended. And that's been really fantastic to see. And gosh, the need, it just goes on and on. And it's so desperate. You've seen all these personal trainers doing, you know, online courses because we've lost our gyms. We've lost our fitness routines. We've lost, in many cases, our ability to cook uh, in kind of an optimized way for ourselves because it's kind of catch and catch can with groceries at this point. Um, So the nutritionists and the fitness instructors are really doing a lot to help and bringing it all online, even when they weren't before. So there's a lot of um, uncertainty about exactly how to do it but where there's not hesitation is that the action needs to happen Mm -hmm. and that these helping professionals are, they're willing to get in there and figure it out and make it happen. And I love seeing it. Well, I I loved being a channel for that possibility Um, because if you've been watching any of these shows as they go along, we've had the personal trainers, we've had um, the uh, Reparata Mazzola and chef Gordon have uh, this cookbook. It's for absolute basics because there's so many people that have not had to be stuck at home and cook for themselves you know they're either running a you know a a fast-paced life where they're eating fast food a lot and ordering pizza or they're going out for and they don't know how to cook but all of a sudden they're stuck at home and going oh my god I can't go out to a restaurant tonight I can't you know and and you know the same takeout over and over again gets old. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we're, we're, we're doing this uh, space for this. And I, I'm glad to see that you're seeing that elsewhere as well, where there, there are people that are out there helping people step into what's next. And you're one of those people. So tell I me. I mean, I, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, tell me a little bit more about how specifically you help with the content marketing piece for people that are moving into a a more online existence for their business. Yeah, I mean, pre-corona, what I did really is I helped um, I helped solopreneurs develop their content marketing strategy and more importantly, helped them set it up with their existing technology stack because it can be extremely overwhelming when you just dive into it. Um, since this has all happened, what I am really spending most of my time doing is, you know, the way that the only way really that someone like me is able to help is I'm giving solopreneurs who are helping professionals my time for free um, and without obligations just to walk through, okay, what are the problems you're having? So you want to, you know, you have this content, you don't know how to get into the world. Here's a structure you can use. Here's how you stand up a landing page so that people can access it. Here's how you promote that. That should help you get through that problem. Just helping them get over those kind of tactical hurdles that they generally don't have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's how I can help right now. That's how I can give. Um, And the other way is by providing as much free education as is humanly possible. So um, I have a Facebook group where I do every day, I do a little bit of training and it really is on kind of those basic marketing fundamentals that, that people in the helping profession don't necessarily know or are, haven't had to be familiar with in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, and then tomorrow, of course, I have a webinar on specifically about the basics of content marketing and how to be successful if you're a coach or a counselor or a consultant. Um, it's just a different approach than if you are more of a, um, a physical product seller or some kind of um, more non-relational mm-hmm. professional. So in, in the helping services, if you're a coach or a consultant or a counselor, it's really all about trust and you simply can't use traditional marketing to build trust. You build trust by 
showing your expertise and providing tangible value to people before they ever meet you. I mean, that's how you build a relationship online. If you can't be you having a Zoom conversation like you and I are right now with everybody in the world, then what you want to do is say, hey, here's what I know. Here's how it can help you. No strings attached. You want to give that expertise. That's how you get the people who need you to know you, to like you, and to trust you. And um, the most scalable and most logical way for helping professionals to do that is through a smart content marketing plan. Um, so what we're going to talk about in the webinar tomorrow is really uh, how how to get off of what I call the digital content hamster wheel, mm -hmm. where I see a lot of people when they're first starting to get into online business, it's like, okay, I have to post in my Facebook group every day. I have to post my Facebook page every day. I need to be on Instagram every day and I need something in the news feed and I need a story and I need a YouTube channel. And should I start a podcast or should I do an Alexa skill first? And so they're just kind of like flinging things out into the universe, hoping to dis to see what sticks and mm -hmm. they drive them. So that's just not what they're here to do. They're not here to be, um, you know, creating content with every waking moment of their day. They're here to help clients and they're, re they're here to help people adapt to trauma, figure out their nutrition, figure out what to do with their business now that it can't function. Um, and they need to be spending their time doing that. So my approach to content marketing is really all about how do we create something once mm -hmm. that we can use again and again and again and again and again in multiple different ways. So you don't have to sit there as a helping professional and say, hmm, I'm supposed to be posting three times a week. What should I post about now? And having to ask yourself that question over and over and over again, it gets them out of that um, that kind of spiral of, of content uncertainty and, and gives them a clear course of action so that they can spend as little time as possible mm -hmm. on developing content ideas and more time being in front of people and, and getting their helpful advice out and bringing in new clients so that they can make a bigger impact. Um, awesome. And that's really what we're going to focus on tomorrow. Awesome. Now, and that's wonderful. I, I, I'm looking forward to, to actually being part of that one as well. I'm excited about it. Um, but I wanted to ask you, because this is the, the, the $100,000 question right now. Um, you talk a lot about giving away free content, building that relationship, the know, like, and trust. People do business with people who they know, like, and trust. Right now, it's almost, um, it's very tricky to actually try to sell anything right now. Mm -hmm. um, there are many, many different attitudes about it, many different schools of thought about it. Um, you know, if you already have that relationship um, created, that bond, that bridge, and it, you're not in that building relationship phase, but you actually have something that, that you have an audience and you're ready to sell, should you be doing that right now? Or should you be kind of holding back and waiting until people are a little bit more secure about what they think the future holds? What's it's a good question and people are asking it a lot. And I mean, I have a really strong point of view on this. My answer is that if you have a way to help people with what they're going through right now, whether they're individuals or families, health practitioners or businesses who are struggling, if you have a way to help them and you're not putting it in front of them and offering it to them, mm -hmm. what are you doing that's irresponsible? the need is desperate. And yeah, there's some giving involved. One of the other big questions I get is if I give away, you know, content, why would anybody pay for it? Because they know you're an expert. That's why. Um, and it's not like you give, you can never give everybody everything. Everything is so individual that the goal is to give so that they understand your expertise and so they know that you feel what they're going through and that you have a real solution that can help them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, there is nothing in the world immoral that's, you know, about saying, hey, you have this problem. You know that I have a way to fix it. I can help you, but my time does cost money. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that in the world. If you can't help them and you still, you know, are trying to get in front of them, that's a different story. That's not what we're talking about, though. If, if you have a legitimate way to help businesses, individuals, parents, anybody with what they're living through right now, yeah. 
you have to put it in, into, out into the world. You have to get it in front of them. That's, that's why you're here. Right. That, and that makes sense. And we are not all Florence Nightingale. Some of us are actually employed nurses. Right. <laughs> not that's volunteer right. nurses. <laughs> kind of thing. Awesome. Um, so tell me a little bit more specifically, what is, when we say content marketing, I know this seems like a couple of steps backwards, but what specifically are we talking about? Can you define that? What is content marketing? Yeah, the definition that I like best, there's a lot of definitions out there, but Content Marketing Institute has a great definition. And it's that content marketing is a strategic marketing approach that's focused on creating and distributing valuable relevant and consistent content to attract a clearly defined audience and ultimately to drive, you know, profitable customer action. What if we kind of break that down, that's a big lumpy paragraph, but if we were to break that down, the idea that it's strategic, that means you're not just flinging random blog posts out into the universe, but the most important part that what you're producing is valuable, meaning it solves a problem for someone it's relevant. It's very specific to that clearly defined audience mm -hmm. and it's not generic and that it's consistent. It's there when people need it. It's not there when you feel like producing something. It's there whenever someone needs it and it's there at the point in time that they most need it. Mm -hmm. um, so really what content marketing comes down to is building relationships by educating people. Um, I don't want it to sound completely altruistic because there is that last part of the definition, right? About driving profitable customer action. Mm -hmm. So if it's pure education with no call to action for a next step, it's not content marketing. It's just education. Um, there's nothing wrong with just education, but if the goal is to educate people so that they know, like, and trust you, and then to say, Hey, because you trust that I can help with this, this is what I have to offer. If you want to go deeper, um, that's what content marketing is. Uh, the old model, instead of saying, here's some good education on this that solves a problem. Here's some good education on this that solves a problem. Here's some good education on this that solves a problem. Hey, I've proven that I can solve this problem. Do you want to work with me? That's content marketing. The old model of kind of traditional marketing is, do you want to work with me? And that's all. <laughs> and it's like, there's no courtship, you know, there's no, there's no relationship building. It's purely, um, it's purely sales and jingles and advertising. Um, and that's, that's really not how you, how you build long-term high value client relationships online. Right. You can't. Right. Yeah. That makes absolute sense. Absolute sense <laughs> that you got me there. I'm just like, yep, totally. Right. Advertising is right in your face. It gets in your head and it sticks around. Um, but that relationship there's stuff, there's there's a lot of depth there. Yeah, and you're right. There's It's just two ways of doing things. It's not like one is right and one is wrong. Um, but when you do have a, a type of service that is relational, right, and you have to understand that person and what's mo what's motivating their current actions and what can be altered for a better trajectory, you know, that's a whole different thing than here's a box of Band-Aids, buy them. You need them eventually, someday you're gonna have a boo-boo. A hundred percent. I used to say to clients when they're like, well, can't we just up our, up our media spend? And I'm like, you're not selling a bagel. You know, if you were, if we're selling bagels, yeah, just up your ad spend and you'll, you'll be fine. Like you're selling who you are and your character and whether people are not, are going to trust you. Mm -hmm. You can't do that by just spending more. Um, you have to show them who you are and you have to show them what you know. Right. And if you're not willing to do that, then there's really no way to build those high trust relationships online. Very good, very good. Now, what do you, give me one tip that a coach or a counselor can start doing right now, like Ooh. right this second, one thing to improve success. It's an excellent question, Gail. And of course, you know, I, I, uh, I have so many tips, but my, I think right now I'm going to give two, I'm going to cheat and give two. Okay. Um, one of them is start building your email list. That sounds so terribly old school to people, but that is how you build an audience that you own. Facebook changes their algorithm all the dang time. 
So does, you know, um, so do all of the other platforms that you don't own in order to have an audience that's yours. Um, right now, the way to have that is still via their email address. So you can reach out and say, Hey, I have something new. I thought you'd be interested. It's still that one-to-one -one communication, or it can feel like a one-to-one -one communication, especially if they know, like, or trust you because of your online content, they're far more willing to engage with email communication. So my thing right now is, especially for people who haven't had their business online in the past, is to be building that email list because that is how you can continually reach out to people who have raised their hand via other channels and said, hey, I'm, I'm interested in what you have to say. Um, so that's one thing is start building your email list. The second thing that you can do right now is decide what the one piece of advice that you would give the world that the world needs from you right now, whether or not you are a traditional mental health professional, a fitness professional, an executive coach, a leadership coach, a life coach, a financial advisor, what do people need to hear from you right now? And what is the way that you can say it that no one else can? Give that a think and think about how you can turn that into a tangible content asset. I have had a lot of um, folks doing, I had a fitness professional who had the brilliant thought to put together a customized video series for for at home uh, strength training workouts for people who don't have weights in their house, because I don't have weights in my house. I had weights at the gym. Why would I need weights in my house? Um, and he didn't customize one for each of us, but he built, you know, several modules. And then if somebody wants to work on this, 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 and this, then he'd put together those modules and it felt very customized, but it's really automated for him to do. But that was the piece of you know, of, of content that he could put into the world that people really needed. Um, I had a nutritionist who was doing recipes from the dregs of your pantry. Uh, I love it. So a place that I have been. So <laughs> really relevant and specific to the problems that we're having right now. How can you bring your expertise to that? And what's the piece of content that you can create around that? And if you create that, if you want to combine that with the first piece of advice, stand up an easy peasy landing page and let people go give you their email address so they can access that piece of content and you'll be building your email list and you'll be providing really good value to the world, to people that you've never met um, and people who really need you right now. So that would be my, my primary piece of advice. If you want to talk about how to set up a landing page, there are a million ways to do it. Um, it hit me on Facebook and tell me what your platform is and I can tell you how to set up a landing page. I am more than happy to share that with you. Awesome. 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 That's great stuff. Absolutely great stuff. Um, is there any final thoughts that you have for our watchers today, our audience, anything that you would like to leave them with that, that one thing that the entire world needs to hear from you right now? Well, I think I want to go back to that. Uh, you brought up the Fred, the old Fred Rogers quote about when bad things happen, look for the helpers. We have a lot of helpers watching right now. A lot of people whose livelihood is tied up in helping people to improve their lives and improve their businesses. You can't stop doing the work that you're doing. You just have to think of a different way to do it. Um, and for you, even if you're not a writer, even if you hate being on camera, digital content is how you can get in front of the most people right now and do the most good. So, um, be focusing on that and how you can put your expertise out in the world to transform the lives of people who have never met you. Will you get business out of everyone who, who sees your work? Of course not. Um, but you will build a reputation as a giver and you'll build a reputation as someone who really has deep expertise in that area. And, and that's worth, worth every penny. So a lot of people say give till it hurts. I feel like when it comes to content, it's, there's no hurt about it. It's just, Give, 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 give till it helps. And even if you don't get business from everyone who views your content, you will have changed them by providing it to them. And, and you will, you will be able to nurture those people who raise their hands and say, yes, I'm interested in this. You will be able to build a relationship with them over time so that they know, like, and trust you. And it will help you develop more business, but focus on the giving first. You got to give to get. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Mary-Kate, for being here with us today. You offered 
great deal of value with our time together. I really appreciate your insights and your perspectives. Thanks again. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me, Gail. Absolutely. When you open yourself up to actual energy work makes that recovery progress so much faster. That recovery is possible. You do not have to live as a victim until your last days. You have unbelievable strength and I know that because you're still here. Do you want to create something completely unrecognizable with your life? I can show you how.